An Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales Book 3, Chapter 24 On Society and Solitude To seek society and to shun it are alike blamable extremes for those who are living in the world. And it is to such that I am speaking. By shunning society, we indicate disdain and contempt for our neighbor, and by seeking it, we imply idleness and inactivity. We should love our neighbor as ourself, and it is not a proof of love to shun him. While, as a sign that we love ourselves, we should be content with our own society, that is, to be alone. First think of yourself and then of others says St. Bernard. If, then, you are not called upon to receive or enter society, remain by yourself and hold converse with your own heart. But if you are rightly called on to join in society, then go, as in God's sight, and mix with a free and loving heart amongst your fellows. That is bad society, which has a bad object in view, or which is composed of visions. From indiscreet or profligate persons, turn away, as the bee turns from all that is foul and um, impure. For just as the society of one who has been bitten by a mad dog is dangerous, they say, especially to children and weak people, so is that of ill-regulated and profligate men, especially to those whose piety is as yet tender and weak. Some kinds of society have no end except recreation from more serious occupation, and though we should not exceed in such, still we may lawfully bestow our leisure therein. Another kind we owe to courtesy, such as mutual visits and meeting together out of respect to our neighbors. And with regard to these, we should neither be punctilious in their observance nor discourteous in their neglect, but unobtrusively fulfill our part, so as at once to avoid incivility and distraction. And lastly, as to the society of virtuous and pious persons, the oftener you seek such, the better. The vine planted amidst olive trees bears the richest fruit, and the soul constantly associated with holy people must imbibe their good qualities. Drones cannot make honey, but the bees make them work. It is a great advantage to associate with the truly devout at all times, let simplicity, candor, gentleness, and modesty prevail in your conversation. There are some persons who weary everyone by the affectation of all their looks and actions, and as all the world would be annoyed by a man who would never walk without counting his steps or speak without singing, so society is extremely troubled by those whose deportment is always artificial, and all their proceedings measured. For there is always a certain degree of presumption in such people. As a general rule, we should preserve a quiet cheerfulness of manner. St. Romuald and St. Anthony have been much praised because throughout all their austerities, their manner and countenance were always cheerful, pleasing, and courteous. Rejoice with them that rejoice. And again I would say with the Apostle, Rejoice in the Lord always. Let your modesty be known unto all men. In order to rejoice in the Lord, the cause of your joy must not only be lawful but good. There are some lawful things which yet are not fitting. And that your moderation may be known, 
Avoid presumption, which is always reprehensible. Nothing can be more contemptible than practical jokes, or jokes which annoy and give pain to others. I have before shown how you may retire into solitude within yourself, even in the largest society. And besides this, you should seek actual local solitude, not in the desert like St. Mary of Egypt, St. Paul, St. Anthony, Arsenius, or the other solitary fathers, but retiring into your own room or your garden or wherever else you can. But gather together your mind and heart and refresh your soul with pious meditation and holy thoughts or by sacred study, imitating the bishop of Nazianzen, who, speaking of himself, says, I was walking with myself at sunset by the seashore, for thus I am accustomed to seek relaxation and relief from my ordinary cares. And then he goes on to narrate his pious reflections, which I repeated to you before. And St. Augustine records of St. Ambrose, that entering into his apartment, for the entrance was open to all, he found him reading, and having waited some time for fear of disturbing him, he went away in silence, thinking that the brief space which that holy pastor could devote to refreshing and invigorating his mind amidst the many cares and occupations ought not to be intruded upon. Chapter 25 On Propriety in Dress St. Paul desires Christian women, and he undoubtedly includes men, to adorn themselves in decent apparel with modesty and sobriety. Now, propriety in dress and its appearances consists in material, fashion, and cleanliness. As to the latter, it should be invariable and as far as possible you should avoid all kinds of stain and soil. Outward purity is, as it were, a type of that which is within. And God himself specially required personal purity of those who ministered at his altars and took the chief part in devotion. As to the material and fashion of clothes, propriety in these respects depends upon various circumstances such as time, age, rank, those with whom you associate, and it varies with different occasions. Most people dress better on festival days, according to the season, and in penitential seasons, such as Lent, just the reverse. So at a wedding we wear marriage garments, and at a funeral the garb of mourning, and when we're going into the presence of princes, we dress differently from what we do at home. The wife may adorn herself to please her husband, and it is lawful for maidens to desire to be pleasing in the eyes of their friends. But everyone despises old age when it would affect to adorn itself. Such trifling can only be tolerated in youth. Study to be neat, and let nothing about you be slovenly, or disorderly. It is an affront to those with whom you associate to be unsuitably dressed. But avoid all conceits, vanities, finery, and affectation. Adhere as far as possible to modesty and simplicity, which doubtless are the best ornaments of beauty and the best atonement for its deficiency. St. Peter admonishes women not to adorn themselves with plaiting the hair and putting on of apparel. And such follies in men are purely disgusting. We are apt to suppose that vain women are but weak in virtue. At any rate, it is smothered in their ornaments and finery. They excuse themselves, saying that they see no harm. But I say, as I have said before, that the devil rejoices in such things. I would have my spiritual children always suitably attired, but without show 
or affectation. Theirs should be the incorruptible ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. St. Louis summed it all up in saying that everyone should dress according to his station, so that wise men may not say, You are too fine, nor the young, You are too homely. But if the latter are not content with what is suitable, you must adhere to the counsel of the wise. End of chapter 25